The armor. 2, 23, 24, 25. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> <clears throat> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Ah! Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look when to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it, it's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how 
How's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> GPS. And three, four. Stop. Who goes next? I'm next. Five. One, two, three, three. And... Wait, I gotta choose a route. Should I go here or there? Choose already. Nolik, what are you doing over there? Nothing at all. Just waiting at my place. Good, and don't get off it. Well, Fire? What was that? The alarm on my fixie tab. Oh, our lesson's about to start. Hurry! What about the game? Later! As soon as young Fixies enter their first year of Fixie school, everyone gets their own Fixie tab. It's a little computer that can do anything at all. Well, almost anything at all. Studying with a Fixie tab is fantastic. You can read it just like a book and write in it just like writing in a notebook. You can use a Fixie tab to listen to music, watch movies, find your way around, and talk, text, and send letters to your friends. And if you want, you can use a Fixie tab to go on to the internet that humans use, or you can visit the secret Fixie internet, where you can find news about the world of the Fixies. And Fixie tabs have games on them, too. Of course, these games can be a lot of fun, but you shouldn't play games until your homework is all done. Faster, or we'll be late! I know a shortcut we can use, this way. Now which way do we go? I need to remember the route. I think it's this way, or it could be that way. Well, which is it, this or that? Uh, I have no clue. Uh-huh. So what's our plan? We'll go back and start again. We flew in from there, right? No, I think it was there. That's not how we flew in. It was there. Ah, uh, I think we're lost in here. Uh-oh. No, like, stop the panicking. I only went, uh-oh, I'm not panicking yet. It's your fault, Fire. I know a shortcut. Go this way. How are we going to get out of here? How do I know? All I know is that we're late for our lesson. Thanks to someone. It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Now Grandpa's will punish us. What's going on? Well, I think I found a way to get out. Which way? Right here. I forgot that inside of my fixie tab is a GPS navigator. Wes, uh, what's a navigator? A GPS navigator is an interactive electronic map that can help you find your way around. The navigator can figure out where you are by using signals that are sent to it from satellites. All you have to do is type the address of the place you want to go into it, and the GPS can figure out a route to get you there. And then it helps you as you go by telling you where and when you need to turn, so you can easily get to your destination. Let's see. Right now, we're here. And where do we need to go? <laughs> you know where to school. But where is that? Are you joking? In the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Can you be quiet? Where do you want to go? The laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Please wait while I chart out the route. Ha! It did it! <laughs> the navigator says to go there. Hey, what are you doing over there? Come on! If you happen to go off route, the navigator will give you a different way to... Well, you finally made it. Unfortunately, you missed an important lesson today. We got lost. Forgive us. In case you're wondering, we were studying navigators. And you know what? We just used a navigator to get here. Yeah, 
It showed us the way we had to go. Well, that's certainly quite lucky for you, because now you don't get an F. But from now on, kids, you have to get here on time. I promise you that, because now we know where to get our shortcuts from. The clocks. Go around, left side. That's crazy, you'll crash. No, I won't. See, I told you. What? Huh? Nothing. Hmm. Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with the computer. Uh... <sighs> this stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? how? You gotta know things like that. Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks, too. Uh, push it! Uh, wow, you did it! It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh-huh. And now the clock will go slower. Mm -hmm. Did he mm -hmm. Fire! Now that mm -hmm. clock over there. Let's go do it. That's it! We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool. <laughs> Amazing! He got another one. Awesome! You're unbelievable. Way to go. Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! Yay, I did every level. Oh, thanks. You're both just the time masters of the universe. Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock. Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning. What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do, but everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done, time masters of the universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay, we'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy-to-read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. 
Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha, <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. The Eco Tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa, what is it? An Eco Tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. To grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look, this one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. Aha! Uh -huh. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. <laughs> Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we uh, test these apples ourselves? Uh, Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. Mmm. <gasps> Elisa, don't eat that. <laughs> oh. Lisa, Lisa, Elisa, stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, oh, oh Lisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. She didn't hear us. What should I do? Is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me! I poisoned someone! Yes! With an apple! Fire! I mean, poison! Oh. Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. 
I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now so say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> The oven. Now here he is, our death-defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, 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 I'm falling. Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! I'm just joking. No, like you're a knucklehead. Simka, uh, 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 Tula, we're down here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all. Uh, Need some help? We can manage this ourselves, right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming. Hide! Nolik, are you up for a ride? Because this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. It really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here. Yeah, inside of a fresh baked fixie cake. I don't want to. You think I do? You'll fall off. Ugh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. You want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We gotta find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. 
today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Thomas, I think you'll explode. Ow. But it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? I hate cake. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend who's got a really good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> the airbag. We're gonna be late. We'll make it. I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> well, well, fire. Again, risking your life. <laughs> and super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt, because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection, like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah, but how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag, and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, Make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. 
Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! Grampus, he needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid! As you fixies say... Tish! Today's lesson is done. Hooray! Come on! Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design to use there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so, Caution and care make accidents rare. The Manipulator. Well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our Manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this m m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. Huh. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Huh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. Whoa! Ah! Who's here? Achoo! Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh, dear. What's going on? Ah! Stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... Ah! Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yay! 
Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Uh, uh, achoo! Ah! 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 No, no, Lick? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? Professor Eugenius, I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop, stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? <laughs> Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. To explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do dogs also have uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. 
But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look, is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who, what? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas. It's good to see you. Wow! You flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it! Go away! You go away! You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh... Is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I say run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. Now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. La 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 <laughs> These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. <laughs> That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. <sighs> I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. 
cock-a-doodle-doo. And now the boy's going to go in and chew paper. <laughs> I can't do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Jamie! The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me, in the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, Fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again! I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Uh, uh. Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying. This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh! Got it! Be 
careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher. <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Ah. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out the fire! fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you. You saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> Not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kettle's back in action. Tiddy! Ah, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm, then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius! You forgot the key! The key! Don't close the door! Simka, you must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. To open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, there isn't any code to memorize because the code is held inside the card's memory and the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. Elisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag, then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor da Eugenius, dee dee the water's boiling. Fantastic. ta ra ta 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 ch 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 Wait a second. Ah, oh no. I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, 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 I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh, ah! <sighs> Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, uh... 
Then who were you talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? Where? What? Uh, uh. What was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, that, it's a uh, telekinesis. Uh. It's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> <gasps> Was that done with your mind, too? The door? Yeah, sure. You are a genius. <laughs> Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Fixies. He always helps the Fixies, and the Fixies are happy to help him, too. Professor Eugenius let the Fixies set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Fixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested, from computers, phones, and furniture to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us fixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? How? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked, and... Tiddish. Very clever. That's a real tiddish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. The instructions. Oh, oh. <laughs> hmm, it doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah, instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! Instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without them. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as in ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. 
for a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look, we need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is, you gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have, uh, must have what? Must have what? Look, here it is. Ah, ah. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. The bee. Tom Thomas! Hello. How come you're eating jam straight from out of the jar? Because it tastes so good. are very helpful and useful. How can a bee ever help us out? Bees are hard workers. They are constantly collecting nectar from flowers. Flying from flower to flower, bees transport pollen on their bellies. Thanks to this process of pollination, flowers produce fruit and seeds. In other words, bees help plants reproduce. The bees use the nectar they collect to make that delicious sweet honey loved by kids of all ages. And bee honey is not only delicious, it's also nutritious. So, I'm still afraid of it. What if it bites me? Bees don't bite, by the way. They sting ya. I'm gonna show ya. Don't! The bee's the one who should be afraid, you tyrant. Yeah, you let it go, tyrant. Why are you calling me names? Who's stopping her? She can fly away if she wants. We need to show her the way out. Well, how? Here, little bee. Fly this way. Why don't you try going? <laughs> then what can I say? Shusaka, don't move. It'll sting you. It doesn't want to sting. Both of you like to eat sweets. You like eating jam, and so does the bee. Why don't you carry Shusaka to the window? 
Go on, fly. No, that's not gonna work. You need to go and get more jam. Here, little bee. Yum, yum. Go on and fly, you're free. Let her eat first, don't be greedy. I'm not being greedy. If she eats, she can make honey out of your jam. Long ago, people could only collect honey by destroying the nests of wild bees. And that went on until someone came up with the idea of taming those insects. They started by leaving enough honey for the bees to survive through the winter. People took care of bees in these hollows until they learned to build small houses for them called beehives. And a town made of these bee houses is called an apiary. Bees live and work together in the beehives making honey, while beekeepers take care of the bees and collect the honey. Bees are real team players. They tell each other where the best flowers grow. Do you know how they do it? One of the bees does a dance, and then the rest of the bees watch the dance and learn where they need to fly. You poor thing. Tom Thomas tired you out. I told you there's nothing to be afraid of, you see? She's just so nice and kind. I'm not afraid of her. She wouldn't let me eat my jam, that's all. Well, now it's time for you to fly away. Uh, whoa, she's playing rough here. I want to try. Uh-uh, Nolik, you're too little. You'll have to grow to do this job. Whoa, 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 calm down now. Now let's fly. Hey, Simka, the window's back there. I can see that without you. So how can I get you to turn around? Cool, hooray! <laughs> She's listening to me! Don't miss the window! Now! So long, honeybee! Tideesh! Tom Thomas, do you have any more of that jam left? Yeah, what for? Bring it here, we'll get more bees to fly in. How come? What do you mean, how come? Because it's my turn for a bee ride. The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpus. Grandpus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. 
Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great! Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just <laughs> falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one, until there was a thud. And then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The mighty crane was working until there was a pop. And then the mighty giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. If you think you're screwing... The dog. <gasps> it's about me. Fixies? It's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. Mm. Uh, choose soccer. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? Whoa, whoa. Done for. 
Oh, oh, oh. Come on, look! <gasps> the outlet is sparking! Oh, oh, no! Something must have broken in there! Are we going to fix it? Kids should never touch outlets, and you know it, too! It's forbidden! Then how do we fix it? Go find Papus, and I'll stay here and wait for you! Uh, but where's Papus? <laughs> I know where he is. <laughs> I don't know what she's barking about, but I think Chusaka wants to help us. Then come on, Chusaka, help us. Woo! <laughs> He's in there. <laughs> Papus, Papus. Nolan, is that you? Uh -huh. There's an outlet sparking over there, and it smells like it's burning. Are you sure? Yeah, Chusaka found it. Really? Great job! <laughs> there are many kinds of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs. Like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> Ah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Uh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Add a girl, Chusaka. Well done. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Whoa! Finally, they understand me. <laughs> <laughs>